first things first, I did want to introduce both myself and my co-host, Mickey. Uh, we will be taking you guys today through the club executive training uh, throughout the district's version of Club Runner. Uh, so we'll be covering a couple of dif uh, different things. Uh, we have a thing, we have stuff, simple things like logging into your district's website, uh, managing your club's membership, updating any club information, club attendance, and as well as we're going to go over, have a brief overview of RI integration. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to show everything off uh, in regards to that. Um, however, we will give you a brief overview and we'll we will have a larger webinar on our integration later on in this uh, during this training. So before we do get started, I just want to let everyone know that this session is being recorded and will be posted to our Clubrunner support, or sorry, sorry clubrunnercommunity.com website uh, later on. So if you guys do happen to miss it or you have to head out at any point, uh, it will be available for you to come back and check out later on. So we're going to actually just go ahead and we're going to jump right into uh, into our first, uh, I'm sorry, our first thing. We're going to actually go ahead and log into our district's website. Absolutely. And before you start, Michael, I'm very mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt, guys. Uh, I, I will promise to keep my microphone off after this. There's a Q&A button. Mm -hmm. um, we have live question and answer during this webinar. If you have any uh, questions, please put them in the Q&A uh, section. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them live for you today. Thank you very much. Just as Mickey said, feel free to answer, put in any questions that you have. He'll, he will be handling all of that in the background. Uh, so if you have any questions, Mickey will be able to go there and, and help you with that as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. So first things first, we're going to log in to our district's website and actually see that I'm already logged in here. So I'm just going to log out very quickly. So what? So what? now that we're on our district's website, the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and click on the member login button in the top right corner. And this will bring us to our, uh, our login page. This is where we can start entering in any of our login information. Uh, so we already, we already have ours, but just in case you don't know your username or your password, feel free to click on the forgot username or the forgot password link. Uh, this will bring us to a new page where you can select your individual club uh, enter and, and enter in some information like your last name and your email address. This will send you an email to the entered email address uh, with, with another link so that you can go about resetting your password and recovering your username. And with that, you'll be able to log in to your district's website. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to click cancel for now, and we're just going to go ahead and log in. So we have our username and our password entered into uh, the login fields. And all we're gonna do is go ahead and click on the login button. And this will bring us directly to the homepage. Some, or it'll bring us directly into the member area. Uh, you may be brought into, or just back, back to your homepage. If that's the case, go ahead and click on the member area link in the top right corner. Uh, and that will bring you directly to where I am today. So that you'll be exactly where I am. So since we are on the, the district's website, as opposed to a club's version of Club Runner, um, a lot of the things that you're going to be accessing to as a club executive uh, will be in this four clubs tab here. We have a couple of different options that are listed quite a bit, actually. Uh, we have things like members list to find club executives, edit club information, uh, and a bunch of a whole slew of other things that you can access as well. Uh, if you're following along with me or you're logging in at any point uh, within Club Runner and you see that these options are grayed out uh, or they're just not available for you to click on, that is because you are not listed as a club executive within Club Runner. So in order to access all of these different tools, you will have to be listed as a club executive um, within your club uh, in Club Runner. If so we're going to double check that very quickly. So we're going to go ahead and click on define club executives. And this will bring us to a list of our club's current year club executives. And of course you can go to the previous year or to the next year if you would really like to. Uh, but for now, we're just going to review our current year. And we can see here that John Valentine, the individual that we are logged in as currently is listed as the club secretary. So we do have access to a bunch of these different tools. So. If, as a club executive, if you're not listed here, please reach out to uh, either a district administrator uh, or another club executive that does have access to these tools 
uh, and they'll be able to add you in uh, without any issue. Uh, and once you're added in, you'll be able to access just about everything that we'll be able to see today. And just to show off an example of how we can go about adding our club executives, club executives, sorry, uh, we can go ahead and show you that right now. So we already have a couple roles listed, but just for the sake of an example, we're going to go ahead and click on add new position. And from here, this will open up a new window that we can that we can start editing and adding in some information on. So first, we have our position field. This is uh, this is essentially going to fill the role of what position this individual will be in. Uh, so there's a couple that are available here. Uh, we have vice president, past president, social media, other membership chair, and co-president. These are some options that will be available to you. Some of them may not be, um, but uh, for the most part, these will these will all be available to you. And I should note, we do not have the regular club president, secretary, or treasurer listed here, uh, but that's because we already have those roles uh, associated with the club. And I'll show you that in just one second. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to select a one of these positions. So I'm going to select other in this case. And next we have our title field. This will be the, uh, this is self-explanatory. This will be the title of the position that we have. Uh, so we can set a position of whatever we like, but then we can also set uh, a custom title uh, if we really choose to do so, or you can leave it as the default. So in this case, we're going to go ahead uh, and we're going to select um, uh, executive secretary. secretary. And then from here, after we've entered our title and we've selected our position, we can go ahead and simply select from someone from this drop down list. Uh, to select them as having been in this role. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and quickly select someone. So we're going to select Olaf here. And then once we're happy with all of these settings, we can go ahead and click on the Save button. And as we can see here, our position has been added to the list of other club executives. So we have Olaf Stapledon listed as an executive secretary with the other position. Now, you saw that we have a couple other positions that are listed here already, but they don't have any names. Uh, so, for example, we have the president-elect, uh, we have the, and, and the club treasurer here as well. If you have positions that are listed here, but you don't have any names, you can simply go ahead and click on the edit action. And this will bring up that exact same window that we just saw. And from here, we can go about selecting a club member just as we did before. So we're going to go ahead and select Judith here. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the save button. And as you can see, oh, it looks like, yeah, so we added the Rotary Foundation chair, and we can see that John, Judith Draper has been added and selected uh, as our Rotary Foundation chair. And whenever we do, we do select, save one of these updates, we get a nice little message up at the top uh, up at the top of the page that says Club Executive Updated, just to let you know that everything was working out fine and that everything is good to go. So now that we're listed as a club executive, we can go ahead and we can start, this will give us access to start managing and maintaining all of our different clubs membership, uh, including adding new members, terminating new members, um, as well as changing the status around uh, for a bunch of different members. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to show that as well. In the top blue navigation bar, as I said before, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the four clubs tab. And from here, we're going to go down and we're going to click on the membership lists option. This will be the first one in the secondary bar uh, just below the four clubs tab. So from here, we can see a list of all of our club members. And so we can see that their name, we can see that their current membership type, as well as some other information like their access level um, and things like that. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go through and show you how you can go about adding new members to your club. To do this, we're going to go ahead and click on the add new member button. And once we've clicked on that, it will bring us to this new page where we can start entering the information for our club. And as you can see, there are a bunch of different fields that are that are listed here. So we're going to go through each and uh, we're going to go through each and one of them just to make sure that we have a good understanding of them. So the very first section is the Rotary Information and Integration uh, session or section with some information in here. The first option is the membership type. So we can select from a couple of different uh, types here. 
Uh, this will typically determine um, how your club or how your member is a is associated with the club. So whether they are an active member of the club, if, if they're an honorary member of the club, or you can even select between whether they're a satellite or corporate member. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave it as an active member. We also have the sponsors option. So if this member was sponsored by another member of the club, we can go ahead and select them uh, from the list. So we're gonna go ahead and select Catherine Moore in this option. Next, we have the rotary member number. So if this was a previous Rotarian uh, and they have a rotary, number, a rotary member number assigned to them already, uh, you can feel free to go ahead and you can insert that into this field. Uh, but in this case, this member, uh, this is not a new, this is a new Rotarian. They weren't a Rotarian previously. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave this as blank for now. Next, we can enter in our date joined club. Uh, so this will be the actual date that they have, they were officially inducted into the club. Uh, this is by default, it will be the, it will be today's date or whatever date that it is whenever you're adding this new member, but you can feel free to go ahead and click on this calendar icon to open up the this little calendar preview. And you can select between all of the different months, the different years, um, and specific dates for this member. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say that this member joined us uh, on July 1st, 2021. Next, we have our integration options. So this will play come into play a little bit later on once we cover RI integration very briefly. Um, this will, when our, our integration is enabled, uh, this will determine whether your new member information is sent over to Rotary um, or not. So if we have this disabled, which we currently do, as we actually can't enable it right now, uh, we have it set to do not report this new member to Rotary International. Uh, so what this will do is that this member um, will have their record created within Club Runner. However, it won't be sent over to Rotary, so they won't become listed as an active member of the club. But if we were to have RI integration enabled and we selected this report option, uh, that their information will all be sent over to Rotary right away. And that will all be updated on Rotary's end as well. So you only really have to enter in um, your, this new member's information into one place. So this is a very, that's a really cool option once you have our integration enabled and it helps streamline all, uh, the entire process of adding a new member. Next, we have our member details. Uh, this is where we can start entering in the information for our member. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna start entering some information. So we can enter a title. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna go Mr. Um, Peter Parker. So we're gonna enter their first name, Peter, last name, Parker. And as you can see, there is a little uh, orange asterisk next to it. This indicates that this field is required. So if this, uh, so this field needs to be entered in, uh, before you can actually submit this information. So if we were to uh, if we were to leave out one of these fields, uh, once we go to submit our, our new member's information, it actually won't be accepted and you'll have to go back and fill out that information. Uh, so make sure that if you see any required fields that those are filled out. So we've entered our first name, we've entered our last name. You can also choose to enter in a middle name for the member if you would like. And then we can also choose to enter in a suffix. So if anything wants to come after the name, you can go ahead and add that as well. So we're gonna select Peter Parker Jr. Uh, we can go ahead and we can add in an email address for the member. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and add that quickly. So we're gonna add that in. And then next we can select our, our user's gender. Uh, so there's a few options that are available. We have male and female. And then we also have some non-binary options as well. So we can choose to uh, enter another gender identity. And this will allow you to enter in um, any other identity you would like, uh, it, or you can select prefer not to identify. So if you select prefer not to identify, you don't really have to enter anything uh, anything you would like. This just needs to let you go through um, and essentially not pick anything. Wow. Uh, but for in this case, Peter Parker is a male. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to select that. Next, we're gonna scroll down and we can start entering uh, this user's address information. So we can choose to select their preferred address. Uh, so we can choose between a work or home address. And then we can continue on to enter in their information. So we can enter their address into address line one. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter in the Club Runner office address very, very quickly. 
and we are located in Ontario, Canada. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to enter in our postal code. So we have all this information entered and the very, very last sec uh, session, or sorry, section uh, is for some final settings in regards to the Club Runner account. Uh, so once this member has been uh, added to the club within Club Runner, they will be given both a username and a temporary password that they can use to log into the club's website. If you want to customize this before, the, before this is given out to the member, you can feel free to enter that here. So we can, leave, we can leave Peter Parker however we would like, or if we want, we can just leave it as P. Parker. This can be just about anything you would like. Uh, feel free to play around with this at any, uh, if you have a custom layout, uh, you can do that as well. And in this case, we're going, we're going to go ahead and leave the temporary password as it is. And then the final option in this section is the send email notification to this member. So this will determine whether or not uh, a welcome email is sent to the member where they'll be able to retrieve their login information. Uh, so if you want to, to send this out to them, make sure that this option is checked. And if you have any custom uh, email notifications, you can select that from here. Unfortunately, we already have a few, um, but we're going to go ahead and actually we're just going to go ahead and we'll select one. So we're going to send out a custom email notification. Uh, these can be created later on when you're going through the communications tab. Uh, but for now, uh, these are these are what are available to us currently. So if we scroll back up to the top of the page, just to make sure we have everything entered correctly, we have our membership type selected. We have our date joined club entered. These are all required fields. And then as we move down, we have all of the required fields in the member details section filled out as well. So we have first name, last name, and gender. Those are all selected. And as we move down, we have our all of our address fields filled in. So we are good to go. So once you're happy with all of the information that has been entered, you can simply go ahead and click on the add member button. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and oh, looks like we already have this username that has been entered. So within Club Runner, um, if a user a username must be unique. So if you if if uh, the username that has been entered is already being used by another uh, another user in the club or just another user within Club Runner in general, uh, you won't be able to use that username. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead go ahead and we're going to have to update this. So we're just going to update this to uh, P Parker five zero three two eight. And now we're gonna try and add the member once again. There we go. So now that it's all processing, and as you can see, once the uh, everything is ready to go, you will automatically be brought to this new members uh, member profile. So we can we can scroll down. We can see all of this information that we've entered. Uh, so we have our first name, our last name, our email address, and we have our address all listed. This is all of the information that we've, had, we, we've entered. But what if there was some information that uh, we couldn't enter in during that initial, uh, that initial process of getting the member added into Club Runner? In that case, as a club executive, we can go ahead and we can start editing the profiles of, of all of our club members. So we can go ahead and click on the edit option. And this will open up the page so that we can now start changing some things around. Uh, so now we're going to add the date of birth uh, for Peter Parker here. So we're going to go in, we're going to select a new date. So I'm going to click on July 2021 at the very top. And that will bring us to an, uh, a blown up view so we can select individual months. Or we can go ahead and click on 2021 once again. And this will bring us to another view so where we can access the individual years. So I'm going to go back a couple years. Uh, we're going to go to, let's say, uh, 1986. And then we're going to go ahead and select our month. So we're going to say Peter Parker here was born in August. Um, and then we can finally select the individual date. So August 20th, 1986. Uh, this is Peter Parker's birthday. Uh, we've been able to go ahead and we can add that in. We can add in any other information we would like. And I see we can enter in some spouse or partner information as well. So we'll go ahead and do that just as an example. So we're going to enter our partner's first and last name. And you can go about editing any other information on here as, as well. But this is, this is what we'll go ahead for now. Once you're happy editing any information, go ahead and click on the Save button. 
So this will process all of that new information. And as you can see, all of that information that we've entered, uh, so their birth date and their spouse or partner's name uh, is now saved within their profile and is accessible through their profile now that we've added it. So that's how you can go about managing your club's membership, or, or sorry, at least at going about adding, uh, adding any new members to your club and editing their profiles. Uh, but that's not everything for what if what if we need to terminate a member? How do we do that? So let's go back to the four clubs tab in the top blue navigation menu. And from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the membership lists option once again. This will bring us back to that exact same page that we were just on when we click the add new member button here. Um, but this time, instead of clicking on add new member, we want to go ahead and we want to terminate one of our old members because since they've left the club. So we're going to scroll down the page. We're going to locate the member that we're going to go ahead and terminate. So we're going to go ahead and Fred uh, Fred Pohl here. He's left the club. He uh, he's no longer participating in anything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to terminate their membership status. So for Fred, we're going to go over to the actions column for them, and we're going to click on the change status option. From here, there are a couple of different options that are available. We have terminate membership, we have the change membership status, and we have edit active membership type. So in the case of terminating a, uh, terminating a member, we can go ahead and click on the terminate membership option. So let's go ahead and click on that. And from here, we can now select some more information to indicate uh, when, they, when they left the club or uh, any reasons as to why they are leaving the club. So we're gonna say Fred Pull here, they are an X member of today, July 9th, 2021. But just like any of the other date fields, you can go ahead and select on this calendar uh, to select individual dates if you would like. Next, we can go ahead and we can select our reason for termination. Uh, there are a number of reasons that are listed here. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna say that Fred Pull here, they ended up joining another club. But if there's any particular reason that's not listed here, you can go ahead and select the other option and you can, and then you can enter in the, uh, we can further specify using this, if other, please specify field. You know what, let's actually do that and to, just to show you as an example. Uh, so, so Fred here, they have now left the club. I know we said they, they, they joined another club, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna enter that as well, but this can just about be anything that you wanna enter. Um, if there's any specific reason, you can feel free to enter it in here as well. And then we also have those same options for our integration, whether we want to share this termination with Rotary. So if this is reported to Rotary International, uh, then their termination will be sent over and they will also be terminated on Rotary's end as well. However, if we select do not report, uh, this termination will only take place within Club Runner. So, this is, so make sure that you, you have this option set correctly uh, when you're going through with these terminations. Sorry about that. So we've selected all these options, but you may notice that there's a little bit of a, there's some, there's some text on the right hand side. Um, this is where we can convert, we can get our X member confirmation. Uh, so this is just saying that once they are marked as an X member, there's a couple of different things that will happen to their account. So the first option thing we'll see is that their member access right will be changed to level 70. Uh, so that you don't really have to worry about this as a uh, as you are on the district's website. This is more so uh, if you were to have your own club version of Club Runner. But you can also see that they will be removed from any of the following distribution lists. Uh, so if there are, again, this is also mainly for uh, when you're on the club version of Club Runner. But this is good to note uh, if they are located with any uh, with any things like distribution lists, committees, or anything like that, uh, they will be removed from them whenever the termination is processed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go, we're going to click on the terminate member button at the bottom of the page just to finalize all of this termination and we're going to actually get Fred uh, listed as an inactive member. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And as the system processes this, uh, you, you'll be able to go through, but once it's done, uh, you will be brought back to the active members list. And if we scroll down, we can no longer see uh, the member listed here. So if we, but if we, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the record was deleted. Uh, we also have an inactive members list. So if we were to scroll back up to the top of the page, on the left hand side there are a number number of different options. 
Uh, there is the active member list, which is what we are on currently. Uh, there is the other user list, um, which I will, we will be going over very shortly. And then the inactive members list. If we were to click on the inactive members list, we will be able to see a list of all of our club our club's terminated members. And as you can see, we have Fred Pohl listed right here. So they are now listed as an X member uh, within the inactive members list. And if you wanted to go ahead and reactivate them, go ahead, click on the change status option. And from here, you can go ahead and select activate membership. It's the exact same process. Uh, you go in, you can select their membership type. So this time you can select between active, honorary, or one of the other active types like satellite or corporate. You can enter in a new club join date and a new date join Rotary. And then just, to, just as we did before, we can select whether we want to report it to Rotary or not. Uh, so just in this case, Fred Pohl did leave our, leave our club, so we're not gonna go ahead and we're not gonna activate their membership once again. Uh, but if that was the case, you can feel free to do it this way as well. So let's go ahead and click on the go back button. And then we're going to click go back one more time. This will bring us back to the members list page that we were just on. And now I very, very quickly want to cover um, other the other users list. So on the left hand side, we're going to go ahead and click on other users list. And you can see we have a few listed here already, um, but there is these are these are other club, uh, I shouldn't say club members, uh, but these are other club records uh, for individuals that are uh, associated with the club. So when you create an other user record, uh, these, uh, these will act just the same as a regular club member would be able to. Uh, so they'll be able to log in and access the, access the website. Um, they'll be able to come in and update their profiles. Uh, but the only difference is, um, is that if the club has RI integration enabled, these records will not be sent over to Rotary. Uh, so these will essentially act as um, act, just act as regular club members, but there's not and no Rotary connection for you there. So whenever their profile is updated, that won't be sent over to Rotary. Uh, I found a lot of different clubs have used these for things like hired staff members. Uh, so if they're so if your club decides to hire someone external from the club uh, who's not a member of Rotary. Uh, you can create an other user record for them, and you'll be able they'll be able to uh, they'll be able to assist in maintaining the club's records and anything like that. And the, the process of adding another user record is exactly the same. From the other user list, we're going to go ahead and click on Add New Member, and this will bring us to a very very similar page where we can enter in all of the information, um, just like we did for a regular active member. So we can select between our membership types. We're gonna go through this very, very quickly. We can go ahead and select one of the available ones. So we're gonna say this is a staff member. Uh, they don't have a sponsor in this case. Um, they don't have a Rotary member number since they are not a Rotarian. And you will see this box as well. I have where it's, it indicates that you have received their consent. This is important. Um, if you don't have permission to store an individual's member information within Clubrunner, uh, you should not be you should not be entering their information. So make sure you have their consent. Um, and this is a checkbox just to make sure, uh, just to show that you did get that permission. And then we can continue going down. Uh, so this time we're going to go enter in some new information. So I'm going to say this is for Mary Jane here. And Mary Jane is a female. Um, and again, you can enter in whatever information you would like. We're just going to go through and we're going to enter the required fields for now. So we're just going to quickly go through this. So we can enter in their information. And just like before, we can set their username and temporary password if we would choose to do so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave it as is for now, just, just for this example. And then we're going to go ahead and click on add member. Oh, looks like our username already exists like just like before. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to update this. This is something a little different and we're going to click add member. Great. So we've just created an other user record. Um, again, they'll act just like a regular club member, um, but they will be able and they'll be able to log in, but their information will not be associated with Rotary at all. Uh, so even if with our integration enabled, uh, their information will not be sent over to Rotary and processed as a club member. Uh, this is a entirely separate, uh, separate from Rotary in that case, or in that 
yeah, in, 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 in that scenario. So that's how you can go about editing and maintaining your club's individual membership. So for, you can update their profiles, you can add new members, you can terminate new members. How do we go about maintaining the like the club's information? That is also something that you can do through the districts uh, through the district version of Club Runner. Uh, so to to access all of our club information, again we're going to click on four clubs in the top navigation bar, and then we're going to go ahead and click on Edit Club Information. From here, it'll bring us to a new page where we can review all of our club's current information. Uh, so we can see some meeting information and we can choose to view a map if we would like. We can see some upcoming uh, upcoming speakers and events and things like that. And if we scroll down, we can see the list of our club's current executives. Uh, so you'll be, able to, you'll be able to review all of that here. And if you, you see something wrong and you wanna change that, you can go ahead and click on the edit executives and directors button. And that will bring you right back to that page where you can start editing and uh, making changes to your club's executives list. So, but this is, this is not what we really want to, we want to cover right now. Uh, since we've already talked about that, we're going to scroll back up to the top of the page. We're going to go ahead and we're going to enter in and we're going to edit our club information. So within this big, uh, this big box where we can see our club's meeting information, there is a blue button that says edit club info online. We're going to go ahead and click on that button. And that will bring us to this page where we can start reviewing all of our clubs, um, our, our club's information. So we have a couple of different sections. Uh, we have club details, contact information, uh, as well as some meeting information. So in this case, we're gonna, go, we're gonna start with our meeting information. We're gonna go ahead and click on the edit button in the top right corner of the meetings section. And, there, and from here, there's a bunch of different options that we can choose to enter. So the very first option is the meeting schedule. So this is how often the club meets as well as any other additional comments that you want to include. So we can select an individual day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, just any day of the week, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna select Friday. And then next we can go ahead and we can enter in the time of our meetings. Uh, so let's say our club meets at 6 p.m. So we're gonna go ahead and enter six o'clock within this text box. And then we can select between AM and PM. So for PM, we're gonna, obviously we're gonna go ahead and select the PM option. And next, if there was any additional comments that you wanted to include um, for your club members to review on the, on the website, you can go ahead and enter in this information as well. So we, we can see we have some limited seating in person um, but we also, we, our club's also hosting uh, our meetings through Zoom. Uh, so if anyone's not able to attend a meeting and that kind of fills up, um, we can let people know that they can start joining in through Zoom. Next, if we scroll down, we have our online meeting where we can go ahead and we can choose if, if our club is meeting online, uh, we can either enable or disable this. So by default, it will be disabled and you'll only see this little checkbox right here that says our club meets online. If you were to go ahead and check this checkbox, uh, you will see a bunch of new options up here for you. Uh, so for example, we can enter in a meeting URL. So if you have a specific Zoom meeting URL or it doesn't necessarily have to be Zoom, um, if you, you can share that URL with your club members here. And then you can also enter in some private details. So you can share like the Zoom meeting password uh, with your members as well. Um, so this is, a this is a great way to show this off to your club members. Uh, if we go to scroll down a little bit, we can now enter in some more information regarding uh, the actual location of our meeting. So we can see here, we can enter in the name of the location within the location field. We can also go ahead and enter in uh, the rest of our address information, just like we did when we're entering a entering information for a new member. Uh, we can enter in the address line one, address line two. We can enter in the city that the meeting will be taking place in, the country, all of the, the, the generic um, address information that we wanna have selected. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish this up and we're gonna go ahead and enter in our postal code. Next, we have the, the, these next two options are somewhat are pretty interesting. You can choose to enter in the latitude and longitude of your meeting location. And what this will do 
uh, is it will allow a, a map of your club meeting uh, location to appear on the district's website. So we have, we have our latitude and longitude already entered, but if you don't know that information, you can choose to select this update latitude and longitude based on meeting address. So based on the information that we've entered into the previous fields, um, the system will automatically find and enter in your latitude and longitude coordinates for you. So let's say we didn't have this information here, that's just been empty. We can go ahead and click select this option. And when we go ahead and click the save button to confirm everything, so let's go ahead and do that. We can see our meeting up information has been updated. Now, if we were to go back into our meeting information, you can see that, that our latitude and longitude coordinates have been re-entered for us. And what this will do is will allow this big map to appear to show off um, to show off where the actual location is. So you can get an idea of where the position is on a map. So, that, so that's our club meeting information. Next, we can go through and enter in our club details. So just like our meeting information, we can go ahead and click on the edit button for the specific section that we want to edit. So we'll go ahead and edit our club details very quickly. And we'll go through, you can enter in your club name, uh, a, like, a, like a short nickname for your club um, and all of this information. You may not be able to access some of this, uh, just I'm listed as a, a district administrator right now. So I have a little bit more access than you may normally have. Uh, but these are all of the information that is stored here. You can enter in the date that you were chartered, um, a club motto that you guys might have, as well as a greeting. And of course, if you want to format these options as well, you can go ahead and click on that link to gain access to a formatting toolbar. So these are so this is a great way to get make sure that you have you have these looking exactly how you want them to. And just like the other uh, uh, sections, we can go ahead and click on the save button to make sure that information is confirmed and saved within Club Runner. Next, we have our contact information. Just like before, we can go through and enter in uh, more information about us. Just, this is mainly just entering, entering things in so we can enter our mailing address, as you can see, um, all of the typical address information that you could want, as well as some contact details. Uh, so in this case, we have a permalink. You don't necessarily need to worry about this. This will automatically be set by Rotary. Um, but you can adjust that if you would like, or sorry, it's not, not adjusted by Rotor by Club Runner, um, and this will uh, kind of be a little shortcut to your website. But don't that's that's perfectly fine for now. Um, next, we have our website option. So if you have an external website for your club, um, but you use Club Runner to maintain your membership, uh, you can enter in the URL for that address here. So we have our clubrunner.ca address listed currently. And next, we can enter in some more basic contact information for our club. So we can share uh, our club email so that people can send emails to the club. Uh, and we can also choose to uh, enter in our a club phone number or a fax number if we do choose to do so. so. Once you're all happy with this, just like before, go ahead and click on the Save button to finalize and confirm all of those changes. So. That's how we can go about updating a bunch of our club's information. Uh, and next, I really want to cover how you can go about um, recording your club's attendance. Uh, so for whenever you guys, you guys record a attendance at your meeting, you can go ahead and share that information with your district through Club Runner. So first, we're going to want to go ahead and access the attendance module. So we're going to go ahead and click on the four clubs tab once again. And from here, we can scroll, we can go along and we can see club attendance report. If we click on this page, uh, we will, or click on this option, we'll be brought to a new page. So in this case, um, since, uh, since it's, it's still January, the new rotary year has just started, uh, we won't actually be able to enter in attendance just quite just yet um, for the current rotary year, but we can, we're actually just to give you uh, an idea of what this looks like. We're going to go back and we're going to edit our 2020 to 2021 Rotary um, meeting information. So we're just going to go ahead and click on the Enter Previous Year Attendance button. And from here, we can see a list of all of the, all of the different months within the previous Rotary year. Um, so as, as the, the year progresses, uh, these months will appear um, after the end of the month. So for example, 
uh, for this current rotary year, you won't actually be able to enter in your July attendance uh, until um, until August uh, when, when the July option will appear. But from here, we can go ahead and enter in all of this different information to share it with the district. So you can see we have our number of members uh, at the end of the month. Uh, we can also choose to share how many new members have joined the club within the month, how many have been terminated, um, as, well, um, as well as how many meetings that the club has held and the general attendance ratio uh, for those meetings. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna enter in some of that information very, very quickly. Uh, so we'll say uh, we had, uh, we, we've had three new members in August. Oops, we had three new members in August. I'm oh, sorry, we've had 33 members at the end of August and then we've had three new members join us. Uh, we didn't have any terminations, fortunately. And then we've also held four meetings every or once every week on Friday. And then we've had a, an 80% attendance percentage. And then just like that, you can keep going through along with each of the individual months. And then when we go ahead and click on the save button, that will make all of this information available to your district administrators right away. Uh, so this is all shared with them. They'll be able to go through and review that um, wh whenever they choose to do so. Uh, it is very important to note that there, as, since we are using the district version of Club Runner, the attendance module is quite limited with what you can do. As you can see, you can only really enter in some information. Um, but if the club were to sign up for Club Runner and get the club version um, and make that available to them, they'll be able to do a lot more different things like, uh, like record individual member attendance. So you can go through and individually select which members had, had attended a specific meeting. Um, you can apply things such like makeup. So if a member missed a meeting, uh, you can go through, then they've earned a makeup, you can go through and apply that to their record as well as well as things like leaves of absence and, and all of that all, all of that good stuff that you could use to make sure that your attendance ratios are good. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. So the, the next thing that I want to cover today is, um, I mentioned this briefly, or briefly earlier, uh, is that we're going to cover RI integration. And this is a, this is a great tool uh, so that you can make sure that all of the information that has been entered into Club Runner uh, is also available on on Rotary's and on my Rotary and Rotary's databases as well. Uh, so you don't necessarily necessarily don't have to enter information into two different places at once. Uh, you can simply go through, uh, make all those changes in Club Runner, and all of that information will automatically be made available uh, on Rotary's end. Bear with me for one second. I'm going to switch to a new uh, a new account, Club Runner account uh, so that I can show off some of this information for you. So we're just going to swap to this new tab here. And from here, uh, this is the RI integration uh, our integration page. To access this page uh, that I'm already on, you can go ahead and click on the four clubs tab just as we did before. And then we can click on RI integration new. Or well, actually I'll just say RI integration for you. Or, sorry, it just signed me up for one second. Uh, there we go. So we're back in, sorry about that. But yeah, again, you can go ahead and click on four clubs and then RI integration in the secondary bar just below. And that will bring you to this RI integration in integration for your club. And from here, this is where we'll be able to set up and enable RI integration within Club Runner. So there are a couple of things that you do need to do. Uh, first, you have to log in and opt into RI integration through Rotary International. So this will you'll have to log in to the My Rotary website, and you can you can follow the steps that are listed here underneath step one. And this will guide you through the process of selecting Club Runner uh, as your club's designated club management vendor. Uh, it's important to get this set up um, as the primary club vendor, as this will give you full, uh, full read and update permissions. Um, if Club Runner is set as a secondary club management vendor, uh, we will only be able to 
read the information that Rotary has, and we won't be able to send any updates to them. So it's make, so it's important to make sure that you, we are set, or that Clubrunner is set as the primary management vendor. So once all of that has been, has been set up, you can then move on to step two, which says after 24 hours, you can opt in by selecting the checkbox below. So there is, as you can see, we have a big yellow, uh, a big yellow window here with a checkbox right at the top. Uh, from so this is what we can select to enable RI integration. Uh, if you don't see this button listed, uh, then that means that uh, Clubrunner has not been set as a club management vendor, and you'll want to double check to make sure that's all been set up correctly through my Rotary. But once that's been done, uh, this checkbox will appear, and then we'll be able to select it um, just by clicking on it. And as you can see, if we scroll back down after selecting it, we can now see that we get a nice little message at the bottom of this section that says integration has been confirmed on the date of whenever it has been turned on. Um, and as well as a nice message to say, to say who has actually enabled it for the club. But you'll also see a, another, another window appear beside it um, to indicate your current RI integration status. So currently we have read and update permissions for with the Rotary database. Uh, so what that means is that Clubrunner can both read and update the information that is stored on Rotary's own database. So that will allow us to make sure that we can update anything that has changed within Clubrunner um, within Rotary systems as well. So if you were to go through and edit a member's profile um, and you were to change something like their, their home address, uh, their email address, or anything like that, with RI integration enabled and read and update uh, the read and update status, um, all of that information will automatically be sent over to Rotary and updated uh, within their systems as well. If Clubrunner is set as the secondary management vendor, as I mentioned before, uh, you will only have read permissions. And that will allow you to use a couple of different tools that, is, that are available to you, um, but you won't be able to update anything um, you won't be able to update anything on Rotary's end through Club Runner. So again, it is important to get that read and update permissions if you want to be able to, if you want to be able to do both. Next, there is the one last option, or sorry, a few more options, I should say. We have the, uh, the Club RI integration privacy options. So if there were any, once read and update permissions have been enabled, if there's anything that you don't want to share with Rotary, so I know some clubs don't like to share uh, their members' birthdays with Rotary, um, you can go ahead and deselect some of these options. Uh, by default, they will all be enabled, uh, but we can go ahead and select deselect our birthday. We can select, um, we don't wanna share our home phone number or our cell phone number. With uh, now that we've deselected these, we can go ahead and select, click on the update privacy button. And as you can see, you get a nice little message that says privacy updated. And now, um, whenever any changes are made to our home phone number, our cell phone number, or our birthday, this information will not be sent over to Rotary. Uh, so this information can no longer be shared with them, uh, and it won't be synchronized should any updates be made. So if there's anything that you don't want shared, uh, make sure that these that these options are, are reviewed and you only have the ones that you do want a Rotary to, to have. Next, we have the RI integration notification contact. So with, with this, whenever a, say whenever a, um, an update is made to, uh, made to a member's information and that information is sent over to Rotary, but for, for whatever reason, uh, that update fail, or is, has failed to process and it doesn't actually update on Rotary's end. When that happens, uh, the RI notification contact will receive an email uh, letting them know that there was, uh, that it had failed for, for any reason and it will tell them, or it will give them information as to why it had failed. Um, this this RI int integration notification contact setting will allow you to select who in your club is receiving these emails. Um, by default, uh, if, you have it select, uh, if you have it set to select automatically, um, this will default the recipient for these emails to the current year club secretary. Um, but, you just, uh, but you can also choose to have it sent to anyone that you would like. 
Uh, so you can either have it set, uh, sent to the club secretary by default. You can also choose to have it set, sent to any of any specific club executive. So we can select between the president, the secretary, treasurer, membership, and any other executive positions that we have listed. Or we can scroll down a little bit in this list and we can select an individual club member. Uh, so if there isn't really any, if, if you don't really want your club executives to handle it, uh, you can give it to you can give it to a specific club member and they will be sent, the emails will be sent to them instead. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select Monica Bradley here. And then all we have to do to make sure that this option has been saved is go ahead and click on the save option, as you can see. So we'll click on that. Uh, oh, so it looks like Monica doesn't have an email address since we've got this nice little notification at the bottom to let us know. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select someone else. So we're gonna go ahead and select Michael C. Let's see if they have an email, I'm not sure. Yeah, so that, that worked perfectly fine. Uh, we have the RI integration contact has been saved successfully. So, we, so now that, ha that has been selected, Michael here will receive any of these notification emails uh, whenever there seems to be any conflicts or issues with RI integration, just to let you know and to so that you can go ahead and start resolving anything. Great. So that's how you can go about setting up RI integration and, 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 and editing any of the settings that are available. Now that we have our integration enabled, that will allow us to access a bunch of other tools um, that are now available to us. And these are some these are some really nice tools that I do recommend you guys going ahead and taking a look at. Uh, these are great tools to help manage information. Uh, so the main one that I like to show off, actually, there's a few. Um, the first one I'll, I'll show you is the Member Updates Archive. So in, in the top of the page, we click on the four clubs tab, just as we had for every other option. And we can go ahead and click on the member updates archive link here. What this will do is bring us to a, um, a history of all of the different changes that have been made within Clubrunner and sent over to Rotary. Uh, so we can see uh, Michael C here, um, they were added as a club executive on July 9th, 2021. And this information was completed. Uh, so what that means is that the update was sent over to Rotary uh, and it was updated in Rotary's database successfully. So there was no issues here. Um, and if we want to see any additional details about that, trans that information transaction, we can go ahead and click on the details option. So we have some information, some more information here, like um, what type of update was made. We can see that it was an executive change when it was archived or when the change was made, as well as the current status of it. So this will indicate whether it was successful or not. And then we can also review what information was actually updated. Uh, so we can see here that their position was updated from the club treasurer um, to the club treasurer. It looks like the, from the last previous year to the current year. Uh, so they were originally listed as the club treasurer uh, for 2021, but this time the, that has been updated for the full 2022 rotary year. So if we go ahead and click on close, we can exit out of that. And you can go ahead and review all of these different uh, histories and things like that. So here's an example of a of some uh, update that had failed. Uh, for Lillian Raider here, we have this listed. Oops. Uh, we can see Lillian Raider's name is listed here. There. In this case, their home address was updated on April 12th, 2021. But we can see here underneath the status column that the that this had failed with a RI member ID mismatch. And if you look and if you see, it'll give you a nice little message to kind of give you a little bit more information. So it says here, failed to match RI member ID within the with Club Runner member ID found in the Rotary tab. So let's go ahead and click on the details option for this. And we can see all of that information that has been passed over to Rotary. So we can see that there actually this is the uh, this is the, this one's the name change. Sorry about that. Let's go to the address change. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on details. So we can see all of this information for the member. So we can see exactly what information was changed. So we their old address was 2060 Winston Park Drive um, in Oakville, Ontario. But their new um, their new data that was sent over to Rotary is one two three Winston Park Drive. But 
if you notice the RI member number field that's here is empty. Um, so what that so because of this member number was empty, uh, this information has not been sent over to Rotary. Um, so it's important to make sure that you have any of your club's Rotary member numbers listed within their profile. Uh, otherwise, their information will not be able to be passed back and forth between Club Runner and Rotary. So it's a very, very good idea to make sure that each member does have their ID listed within the Rotary tab uh, of their member profile. So that's a, that was a quick overview. If we go back up to the top, we also have some other options that we didn't show previously. Um, this, these will allow you to simply uh, filter between all of the different listings that are here. So for example, we can select uh, an individual member. So if you wanna see all of the updates made to someone, so let's go ahead and we will select, um, we're gonna go Bill Bradley here. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the show option. Oh, it looks like they don't have any in this case. So let's find some other member. Let's go back to Michael C because I know they have some. So we'll go ahead and click on show once again. And as you can see, the, here is the history of all of the changes for Michael C, um, at least specifically for the selected date range. Uh, so this is so everything that's shown here uh, will have happened between April 9th, 2021 and July 9th, 2021. But you can feel free to update this date range as you would, as you would, however you would like. Uh, so if you want to see a um, within a specific uh, range of dates, you can select that as well. And if there was any changes, like specific changes that you wanted to see, you so if you want to see any address changes that were made, birthday changes, email changes, any sort of change, you can select that through the RI integration type menu. And then all you have to do, just as we did before, click on the show option. And that will refresh the page uh, to show uh, whatever filters or whatever mm, whatever log or history of changes that fits that those specific filters that you've set. And of course, you can also choose to manually type in some information. Uh, so we want a name change, for example, we can type that in, and that will filter everything automatically based on what has been entered here. So there is the member updates archive. This is a great tool to see and monitor the, the history of changes that were made to your club's membership. Next, we have the compare and synchronize tools. Uh, these are some really, really, really nice tools that I love, that I love to show people. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enter that really quickly. From the four clubs tab, we're gonna go ahead and click on RI member synchronization. When we click on that, we will be brought to this new page and I'm actually going to zoom out just a little bit. Uh, so we'll be brought to a new page where we can see all of our club members listed here. Now, what this page will allow you to do is we'll, it will let you, as, as it says in the name, it will let you compare information uh, for your club members um, between what is listed for them within Club Runner uh, versus what is listed for them on Rotary's database as well. So we can scroll down just a little bit and we can see all of our different club members. And if we go to one of our club members and click on the compare action, this will bring up a new page for us to view so that we can take a look at what information has been stored uh, within Club Runner systems. Uh, versus what is currently stored in rotary systems. So let's scroll down a little bit. At the top of the page, we can see information like the member's name, uh, their rotary member number, uh, as well as the ID for, for their club. Uh, so that's some basic information that you can see there. But the, the big meat and potatoes uh, area of this page uh, is this big chart here. From here, you can see all of the information, as I said before, in Club Runner and all of the information in Rotary. So on the left-hand side, you'll see all of the Club Runner information listed. And on the right-hand side, you'll see all of Rotary's information listed. Um, and down the middle, you'll see a nice little status indicator. Uh, so right now we have everything set to show or everything is matching up correctly. So all, so all of these are listed as an equal sign just to indicate that everything is matching up. 
but for if there was any reason that this information didn't match up, so let's see if this works out. Nope, not in that case. Uh, if anything did not match up, then, the, then these will instead be a left or right arrow, which will allow you to select between what information uh, you want to update, uh, which is something that the Rote Compare and Synchronize page will also allow you to do. So if there's any discrepancies between the data in the two systems, you can use this uh, compare and synchronize page to uh, automatically send all of that information either to Club Runner or to Rotary so that you can make sure that everything matches up. So let's see, let's, let's actually go back one page just for one second. And I believe Marcy here should have some changes that we can make. Let's give it one second. And so just, uh, just to provide, provide a little bit of clarification, we are working on a little bit of a dev environment. Uh, so this is where we can go through and do all of our testing for, uh, for Club Runner. So it may be a little bit slower than normal, but that's okay for now. Uh, so let's see, hopefully, yeah, there we go. So we can see here that there is a little bit of a discrepancy for Marcy's business address. Uh, so we can see here that their address in Club Runner is listed as 2424 2nd Avenue Southeast. But within, uh, within Rotary Systems, uh, this is listed as Route 5, Box 603. And instead of the green equal signs that we have listed for everything else that is matching up, we have a, we have a nice orange arrow. Uh, so this, this is how we can go about selecting um, which information or how we want this information to flow. So if we want to make sure that the rotary information is up to is updated with whatever is listed in Club Runner, we can leave it as this orange, uh, this orange arrow pointing to the right or pointing to rotary. However, if we wanted it to instead pull the information from rotary and bring it in, sorry, bring it into Club Runner, all we have to do is click on that orange arrow and you can see that it changes to a blue arrow pointing in the opposite direction. So now the arrow is pointing from Rotary's information to Club Runner's. So what that means is that once we go ahead and click on the synchronize selected fields button down at the bottom of the page, the information on, in Rotary's databases will be copied over uh, and used to update the member's profile in Club Runner. So let's go ahead and show that as an example. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change all of these to pull the information from Rotary uh, into Club Runner. And we're going to go ahead and click on the synchronize selected fields button. You'll get a nice little confirmation message just, to, just indicating that this can't be undone and that you want to continue with it. We'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll get a, we'll, all that information will start being processed. And the system will start gathering all the information from Rotary and use it to update the member's profile. So let's go ahead and we'll just give it one moment. There we go. So now if we were to scroll back down to the bottom of the page and we select the business address once again, we can see that information that was listed in Rotary's database has been pulled over into Club Runner. So before uh, we had a different address listed here, but now we have that root five box 603 address and everything is matching up correctly. So this is a very, very nice tool that you can use to kind of go ahead and maintain and make sure that all of this information is, is um, matching up correctly. But that's not all of this Compare and Synchronize page can do for you, actually. If we go ahead and click on the Back to RI Compare and Synchronize link at the top of the page, it will bring us back to that page we were on previously. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we have a couple of other different sections. So if before we were looking at the members in sync section. So those are all people, all individuals that are uh, successfully connected and synchronizing with Rotary. So there's no issues with their records. But if we scroll down, we'll have a couple of other different sections. Uh, and these will all indicate whether there is uh, an issue with that individual's connection between Club Runner uh, and Rotary. So here we have a couple different uh, number members listed within member name mismatches. All this means is that the name that they have listed in Club Runner's database uh, versus the name that is listed in Rotary's database is different. 
This isn't really too big of an issue, but if you want to make sure that this information is matching up, you can go ahead and click on the compare uh, action. And just like before, you can pull either push or pull information from Rotary to Clubrunner or from Clubrunner to Rotary. Uh, next, we have member type mismatches. So this will indicate whether any, any membership statuses um, are, are, aren't quite matching up. So we have, we have quadruple A here. Uh, they have their club runner membership type listed here as honorary. So they are listed with as an honorary member within club runner. But we also have the RI member type uh, listed as terminated. So within club runner, they're listed as an honorary member. But in Rotary's databases, they've been, they were a previous member of the club and they, but they've since been terminated. So this is a great way so you can see, you can make sure all of that's all, all matching up. But we also have a couple other options. We have members missing in RI and members missing in club runner. These are good ways to show whether a, uh, a member of the club is missing a record or missing a login profile in club runner or if they're not listed in Rotary's database at all. So members missing, missing an RI uh, will be people that have records in Club Runner and they can log into the Club Runner website, uh, but their member record is not listed in Rotary's database. So we can see here, we have, uh, we have a couple of individuals listed here. We have Peter Francisco, William Gates, and Jonathan Summers. Uh, but so we can see here, in this case, we can go ahead and we can, from what for William Gates, if we follow their profile along to the actions column, we can go ahead and click on add member to RI. And what that will do is since they aren't listed in Rotary's databases already, it will take the information that is listed in Club Runner and it will automatically, or I shouldn't say automatically, so you have to click this button, but it will take all of that information and bring it over to Rotary and add them as an active member of the club. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. We'll click add member to RI for William Gates. Oh, so in this case, it looks like the member has a, a date without, um, without outside of the 30 day limit that is required by Rotary. So unfortunately we won't be able to add them today, uh, but all that really needs to be done here is to go into their profile, change that to be within the last 30 days, and then you'll be able to go through and add the member to RI. Next, we have members missing in Club Runner. Here we have some members that are listed. We have Francisco, uh, Peter Francisco and Jonathan Summers. And you may notice that we've, we've, actually, we've actually recognized their name. Uh, they're also listed in members missing in RI for whatever reason. Uh, as you can see in members missing in RI, we can see the information that is listed within Club Runner. So we can see that their current Rotary IDs uh, for Peter Francisco is listed as 418092. But if we were to go to members missing in Club Runner, which are people that are listed as active members of the club on Rotary's end, but they don't have a record in Club Runner, you can see that their ID is listed as 630415. So there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a mismatch there. So what's actually going on is that the system uh, sees that Peter Francisco has a record in Club Runner, but the Rotary ID that's listed in there is not matching up to their actual Rotary ID. And this is the same case for Jonathan Summers as well. Um, you, so all that really needs to be done to fix this is to take the, uh, the Rotary ID from the members missing in Club Runner section, and you can go into their member profile uh, and you can, uh, you can update that Rotary ID. And that will, that will make sure that this mismatch um, is fixed up and they'll be successfully listed within the members in sync section at the top of the page. Now, if there was someone listed as a member of the club, but they don't have a record in Club Runner at all, you will be able, you'll see them listed here and you'll be able to click on that add member to Club Runner button. And what that will do is just like the members missing in Rotary where it sent the Club Runner information to Rotary, this will take the information listed in Rotary's databases and it will pull it into Club Runner and, and create a new record for that person for you. So you don't have to go through and manually enter that information. You can use this to kind of um, ease that process for yourself and make it a little bit easier so you don't have to do any manual intern. So that is the compare and synchronize tool. It is a very, very good tool and it's very important to make, your, make sure that you're familiar with this um, so that you can make sure that everything is synchronizing correctly and there aren't any issues um, with your members information. But we also 
have another version of the compare and synchronize tool called the executive compare and synchronize tool. So we're going to go ahead and visit that page very quickly. So in the in the four clubs tab, just like before, instead of clicking on RI member synchronization, we're going to go ahead and click on executive compare and synchronize. And this is essentially the exact same thing, but this will let you make sure and review um, the current club executives that are listed for your club. So for example, if there was a mismatch between our, or what is listed in Clubber and what's listed in Rotary, you'll be able to use this in the exact same way to make sure that there's no discrepancies in that, in, in that sense. So we can see here, William Gates is listed as the club president in Club Runner, as well as in Rotary. And the and same thing for Lillian Rader, they're listed as the club, the club secretary in Club Runner and the club secretary in Rotary's, uh, in Rotary's databases as well. So this is another, another really, really nice tool that you can use to make sure that all of this information is up to date within both systems. Right. So that is the compare and synchronize tool and just about everything that you can do with our integration currently uh, on the district version of Club Runner. And that will just about conclude the webinar today. Uh, I know Mickey has been going through and answering a bunch of your different questions uh, in the Q&A uh, section as well as the chat box. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pass that over the pass the, the webinar over to him and he'll be able to host a nice Q&A session uh, where he'll pinpoint a lot of the different uh, important questions that he's found and make sure you can, guys can get some even more information. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, I hope Mickey can provide you some a lot of great information as well. Thank you. All right, thank you, Michael. Um, so uh, yeah, my name is Mickey, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's let's actually give me one moment, please, because I'm just going to kind of change my configuration. And what I'd like to do is uh, I, I want to go over some questions. Um, now, Michael covered a lot of ground, and it was excellent, and I and I really hope you got something out of it. Uh, what I'm going to do is just either I might even go over just a little bit of what. Uh, uh, Michael was going over, but also answer some of the questions that I've um, that I tagged or or I kind of uh, set aside that some of uh, uh, our wonderful audience has asked. So let me just go like this, and uh, I'm going to uh, grab the screen from Michael. Okay, and what I'm going to do is actually hold on one moment, please. Okay, is let me just do this, and. Let's go here. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm actually logged in uh, right now. Uh, also, th this is our demo district, and, and some people have asked, uh, you know, which district is this? This is a club runner district. It, it's not a, a real district, so um, you know you won't be able to uh, uh, to to see or to access this uh, this site. But what I want to go over is so I had some questions um, from our members. Um, one of the things I kind of want to mention is, you know, um, and some people ask this during our Q&A, uh, I'll, I'll put it bluntly, why are we doing this? What, what is the why for inputting information for, uh, you know, getting all the executives in and keeping member up, info up to date? So one of the big things with uh, Club Runner and with Rotary International, it's, it's kind of a living database. What I mean by that is, it's constantly changing. You know, you print, you know, I know some, some clubs, they print their member directories each year. Uh, that is a static member directory. The second you print it, it basically becomes out of date because I'm, you know, member leaves or a new member comes in. This is a, a, a fully updating database. So if, if someone moves, uh, you know, uh, gets a new phone number, et cetera, et cetera, um, uh, that's kind of reason number one is that, uh, it, you know, it, it, the date, if you keep the data up, uh, database up to date, uh, that means that all the information will be up to date and you'll be able to, for example, email Ronald or Harry or, or Mary, because, uh, even though they've moved or whatever. Um, and so um, one, one of the big uh, 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 things about this, uh, another reason is demographics. Um, is Rotary generally getting older or is it getting younger? What is the male-female ratio? Um, th there's a lot of kind of big picture questions. And what, what RI doesn't do 
is it doesn't comb through, you know, your member lists and look at, you know, individual people. It looks at the demographic data and that's what it compiles. So if you're yourself curious of like, how is RI membership getting younger, older, et cetera, et cetera, this is what you're doing. You're updating the information because whatever you do a club, whatever you do a district, uh, it will go to RI um, and all of this uh, a wealth of information, it does get tabulated. It does get checked. So you're not, um, doing this in a vacuum. That's actually something very important to note. Uh, that, like, you know, some people get like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really busy. You know, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? That's kind of one of the reasons why um, is that uh, this information doesn't just exist in a vacuum. It, it goes to all the different branches of Rotary. Okay. Um, another question I really wanted to go over and something that I, um, I just wanted to clarify is uh, access levels. Okay. So um, uh, right right now, um, uh, I'm logged in, and uh, this is like I said, this is all fictitious clubs and fictitious information. Um, it, we talked about this. The the four clubs. Let me make this a bit bigger. Okay, uh, not too big. <laughs> the four clubs tab is right here. Okay, um, and uh, the four clubs tab is what all, uh, you as a club executive will access to now. I just said, I kind of said that really fast. Let me slow that down. The four clubs tab is what you as a club executive will have access to. Now, you may log in to your district and you'll click on four clubs and it'll be grayed out. Like for example, I'll, I'll go, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's various um, other menu items you'll click on and that'll be grayed out. So um, the, the most important thing to remember is if you don't have access, that means you're not defined on the club executives page. So uh, here's a list of my executives, Mickey, John, Judith, and Olaf. Any club executive not defined, I haven't defined my PE, I haven't defined my treasurer, so on and so forth. These people will not have access to the four clubs tab when they log into the district. So my PE, let's say her name is Judy. I'm sorry, <laughs> Judy right here. And let's say her name is Susan. So Susan is my PE and she logs in and she's like, I I can't, I can't access four clubs, what's happening? So um, just make sure, uh, I guess the, the shorter way to say this, make sure your club executives uh, and directors list is up to date for this year. And in fact, if you really want to help your club out, uh, I'm going to click here on next year. Go to next year's uh, 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 club executive list. You can see uh, I actually haven't defined anybody for next year. Or I'm sorry, the club hasn't defined anybody for next year. Uh, please do just just for for this. Like I'll, I'll just do this very quickly. I'm just gonna pick Sue, right? Um, Sue is our president for 2022. I'm gonna click save. So what I've done is I've set Sue up with the four clubs uh, uh, tab for next year. So when Sue logs in. Uh, Sue Baker logs in next year, she will have the four clubs tab. If she is not defined, Sue will log into the district in 2022 and uh, she, she won't be a defined, I'm sorry, she won't have access to the four clubs tab. Now I wanna spend just an extra second on this because this is really important and we get questions from this, not just for today, but also uh, uh, um, uh, from uh, in other situations. It, let, let's say that your, um, uh, you're in this position, which is there's no executives defined, right? This this list is empty, and but so who's going to log in and give you know executive positions? So in that case, please do speak to your uh, district secretary. The district secretary can uh, log in and also define club executives. So let's say uh, no one in your club is defined as a club executive, which means no one will have access to this four clubs tab. So speak to your district secretary um, and they will, um, uh, they'll, 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 they'll basically do this. They'll, they'll, they'll put the, for example, the club president in and then Sue Baker, who's now defined again as club president, she can now log in, click on four clubs and start uh, uh, adding more club executives. So that's kind of really important. That's kind of the building blocks. Without access, you won't be able to do most, most of the things that uh, Michael described today. Okay. Um, uh, someone asked uh, a, a really important question about the member ID and especially about uh, transferring members. So, you know, it, when you add a new member and he or she is brand new to Rotary, that's one thing. They don't have a member ID. They've never been a Rotarian before. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on membership lists. Okay. 
and it's going to take me to my member lists. Now, so adding a new brand new member from scratch, you don't have to worry too much about the member ID. What will happen, just so you know, is that RI will assign that brand new a Rotarian a member ID, it will flow automatically flow down to Club Runner. So let's not talk about that. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, someone who's transferring from a you know, they're they're an active Rotarian. They're coming from another club. That's exactly why we have this transfer new member button. Now, um, like I said, this this may kind of be um, uh, some uh, duplicate information. I just I just uh, we had some good questions about this, and I want to make sure we cover this. I'm going to click here on transfer new member. Okay, and oh, I'm very sorry. I forgot I'm on the demo district. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in the transfer new member screen. So here's what I'm going to do, and uh, it's kind of cheating. I'm going to go to our uh, our, our website clubrunnersupport.com. Okay, and what I'm going to do is so just uh, really briefly, and and like I said, I might be I'm I'm okay to repeat this stuff because I I really want to make sure that this is, gets covered. Uh, Clubrunnersupport.com um, um, is our online uh, help site. It's got tons of tutorials, videos, PDFs, uh, you know, uh, documents you can print. So if you have a Clubrunner question, come to Clubrunnersupport.com and let's uh, type it in. Let's let's use the example of uh, uh, the transfer new member is not working for me because I'm on a Club Runner demo site. So um, I, wanted, I wanna find out about um, how to transfer a member. So I'm gonna type in transfer member and it's gonna give me some live search results. So I'm gonna click on the first one, okay? Um, and, um, and I'm not gonna go to this one. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that again. I'm very sorry about that. So I'll go here, okay, transfer member. And I'm gonna click on the third one, okay? Because this is, this is actually the one, I'm sorry, the second one. I clicked on the one, see, I, I completely missed the district club execs. We want this one and I picked the one for a different one. I apologize about that. So how do I find and transfer new members if you're a district club executive, which you are since you're in this webinar, I'm gonna scroll down a bit. Okay, so I, I clicked here. I'm gonna go back to the club website, which is here. And I clicked on transfer new member. Now because our integration isn't enabled on my demo site, I actually can't uh, demo this. So I'm gonna go here. Uh, what I wanna talk to you about is when you click on transfer new member, you're gonna see this screen. Let me see if I can make this bigger for you, okay? So what this is, this is the transfer new member screen. And the way that this works is you can actually input someone's rotary ID, okay? So um, you can actually search by a member's rotary ID. So if the member says, my rotary ID is one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is, you put that in here and we will live search the RI database um, and we'll find that member ID for you. So in other words, you can verify the member ID. Let's say the member says my, my I think my ID is one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't really know. You can put that in and see if it corresponds to the member you would like to transfer over. Uh, I really love the new transfer member search, the, this new transfer member feature. Um, the reason I love it is because it'll minimize a lot of uh, errors or mistakes because um, you can actually see and query the RI database live before you transfer someone. Let's say someone's coming in and you put in the wrong ID and then RI is like, well, that doesn't really match because we have a different ID. You don't need to worry about that. Now you can actually search by someone's rotary ID Okay, and it will actually give you the results. Let me make this bigger for you. Sorry to, to do a help article, but I just really want to go over this because some people have asked and I want to make sure we cover this. Um, if you put in someone's ID, you can actually see their information. So you can tell, okay, first of all, they have no club associations. This is their ID. They used to be, uh, you know, their, um, and then I can add the member. So in other words, you can prepare the member for transfer and you can check before you transfer that member, okay? Um, and then let's see, um, I, I actually want to also just cover, um, some people had some questions about attendance. So let me just close this, okay? So um, I, I'm gonna click on four clubs and I'm going to click here on the uh, club attendance report, okay? Um, and what, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's go back last year. Sorry, because we don't have uh, um, we don't really have too much information because it's the July New Year. There's there's not much information for the previous year, uh, for this year. I'm sorry. So I'm going to talk about the previous year. So this is the the attendance, um, and um, and I know kind of we already talked about this, but what I uh, what some of the questions that that came up during the webinar um, is this is district level attendance. So district. So we're gonna talk about club, 
district and RI. So the, this is the mid level, we'll call it the mid level in between club and RI. The district level attendance is, is very much concerned with um, uh, your attendance percentages. Are they rising, falling, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking over the months, right? Is your, let's say you have a 75, 80% uh, you know, attendance rate for your club, and then is it dipping to say 40% for whatever reason, right? That's actually what RI is concerned about. RI is, I'm sorry, the district, that's what the district is concerned about. Um, the district is less concerned about uh, individual member attendance. Now, if we go down one step, I hate to use the word down, let's go say left, let's go, uh, if we go to club, a club website, it will have individual club uh, uh, members attendance. So John has, you know, 70% attendance and Susie has, you know, 80%. So none of that information gets input at the district. The individual member attendance gets input at the club level if your club has a club level club runner website. So if you're if if you don't have a club runner website, that your club doesn't have a club runner website, then you will be coming to the district and you'll be doing your attendance here. Okay. Um, uh, one of the questions that we've been receiving is, uh, okay, well, I'm doing my attendance. What about RI? What, what are they, you know, like, okay, fine, the club level uh, is concerned with member, the district level is concerned with, you know, uh, attendance. Rotary International, they're, they're kind of the big picture. Uh, um, uh, so what they're uh, kind of, once again, they're not going to come in here and say, well, in the month of July, the, the club attendance was 75, the month of uh, August, the, the club attendance was 80. They don't actually do that. They're more interested in trends over time. So, um, in other words, they're not looking at all that, the, the, I'll call it the, I hate to use the word small picture, but the smaller details of attendance, they're looking at trends over time. Once again, this is all interconnected. So while you may think I'm doing the attendance and it's good for my club, but I don't really know if anybody else is checking it. Now, they may not be checking, you know, John and Susie and Harold's uh, individual attendance. But these numbers do get checked and they do matter and they do count. So, um, you know, you can, um, when you do this, uh, Rotary is looking at your overall trends year over year, you know, how, how is the um, overall club attendance happening, you know, is, is it growing, is it shrinking, um, you know, all of that. So I just wanted to mention that because there is a differentiation between club level and then here we're at the district, this is the district level attendance, and then RI kind of uh, interprets attendance a little bit differently as well. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is um, I, I think we will actually um, uh, just pause it there only because um, uh, I guess we'll stop it there because um, you know um, uh, this is a lot of information to, um, to take in. Actually, uh, before I get to this, let me, let me just do one more thing, please, okay? So um, if you um, search for club runner, sorry, clubrunner.com slash training, okay? So you're going to type in clubrunner.com slash training into any web browser. Um, this is the, um, uh, the schedule of all the upcoming uh, uh, training webinars that are, that are happening. And uh, you may have already seen this, but I just wanted to go over it because, you know, we did essentials yesterday. T today we're doing the club execs on the district version. Um, just in case you haven't, uh, you know, uh, gone through, um, all of our uh, um, uh, training will be, uh, um, uh, is still open for registration. So if you're interested, for example, if you're a district administrator, we're going to do our uh, district admin training next Thursday at 5 p.m. So uh, please do register. Um, and uh, so I, I wanted to mention that. Another thing I want to mention, and it's worth mentioning again, because people have been asking during this webinar and yesterday's webinar, these videos will be recorded. Okay, so, um, and these videos are being recorded. So we'll be posting the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the videos. If you go to clubrunnercommunity.com, okay, um, and I'm going to repeat that, that's clubrunnercommunity.com, okay, it's going to take you here to our online community. And I'm going to click here on this big kind of steering wheel icon, it says general. Okay, so if I click here uh, on clubrunnercommunity.com and then go to general, um, we haven't posted the videos yet, but we'll be posting the recorded webinar videos in this section of Club Runner Community. 
um, we'll very likely do either another email to all our registrants or what have you. So you'll be getting the information, but that is actually another question that was asked a, a lot during both webinars, yesterday's and today's as well, is that these videos will be recorded, okay? So um, uh, I guess that with that, I'll end it because we're basically on time here. So I just wanna thank uh, uh, Michael and I wanna thank all of you. Uh, thank you very much for attending these webinars. Um, uh, we uh, there, there were some questions, by the way, that, will, that were some large questions about uh, a mobile app and, and, and all these other questions. I actually wasn't able to answer during the Q&A session. Um, I'm trying to get information from certain members and for anybody else who might have a large question that I couldn't answer or that you just didn't get a chance to ask in the Q&A, please do email us. We'd love to hear from you. Support at clubrunner.ca. Your entire club membership is entitled to um, uh, our support. So please do email us at support at clubrunner.ca if you have any questions, issues, uh, anything comes up. Uh, you know, we're here for you for the rest of the year. We, we are really grateful when uh, uh, users and members email us because that means we can start a dialogue. We can we can kind of set you on the right path. So if you feel any frustration, or if you're like, you know what, I'm not sure, I don't know how to log in or I have these issues or these questions, please do email us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, at once again, that this is our community where um, uh, you can post uh, uh, questions and have other Rotarians around the world answer your questions. And then um, this is how you can download our free Club Runner mobile app, just in case you may, may or may not know, uh, Club Runner has a free mobile app. It's for iPhone or Android, um, and you can go download it. And uh, please do try it out. There's, there's no cost for it. Um, I'm going to end it there uh, officially. Um, and uh, I just want to wish everyone a, a great uh, day, evening, or night, whatever time of day it is, where you are. And uh, thank you for attending today's webinar. And I hope all of you have just a, a fantastic weekend. Uh, take care, everybody.